heart. Let us tell, let's talk to the Lord. Let's tell him that we hide his word in our heart that we might not sin against him. Talk to the Lord. That even his word you are going to hear this morning, that you keep it in your heart. You obey it. So that you might not sin against the Lord. So that your life will be pleasing unto the Lord at all times. At every moment. That the Lord will be glorified in your life. In your speech. In your uh, comportment. In every area of your life. In church and out of church. In your workplace, at school. Or wherever it may be. That the Lord will be glorified in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for that son that said, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Lord, we pray that you help us, O oh Lord, even, Lord, to have your word in our heart as we listen to thy word this moment, even this morning, so that, Lord, we might not sin against thee in Jesus' name. The grace to obey thy word in totality. O oh Lord God, that the devil will not be able to cheat us in any way, making us not want to uh, assimilate and obey. Lord God, we pray that grace grant unto us, that every one of us that are going to listen to thy word now, we obey it in totality in Jesus' name. And those that are going to listen later through the internet, O oh Lord, or through CDs we are going to give unto them, Lord, we pray, Lord God, you grant them also the grace to be obedient in totality in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. And what we are listening to today is titled Orderliness in the House of God. Orderliness in the House of God. Uh, it is very necessary uh, that we listen to such a topic. Orderliness in the House of God. Because we have to know that there is difference between God and Satan. God is a God of orderliness. While Satan is full of confusion. Disorderliness. And we see the way Satan do things. Is there is rowdiness. There are noise. It's noisy. And everything looks confusing. And the world is in the church. And the church is in the world. Today. All over. And we don't know. Who are the people that are actually doing things according to the will of God? And those that are not doing it according to the will of God. Because we see disorderliness everywhere. Noise everywhere. Just made a kind of things that are not in order. But the Lord wants us to know how he wants us to do in his own house. That's why we are looking at this topic again. Uh, orderliness in the house of God. Our test is taken from... 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. It says here, These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly, but if I tarry long, that thou mightest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Praise the Lord. So we see, this is what the Lord said. He said, But if I tarry, that thou mightest know, how thou oughtest to behave in the house of God. We need to know. Because knowledge is power. If one don't know how he ought to behave in the house of God, he will behave in a shameful way in the house of God. He will behave in a contrary way in the house of God. We need to know how we ought to behave in the house of God. It is the will of God for us to know how to behave in the house of God. So that... There will be orderliness in the house of God. Disorderliness is not the way of God. Disorderliness is the way of who? Satan, the devil. So, we see, that is why God has to instruct us. Because we see disorderliness everywhere. Places that even say it's a place of worship. That they say it's a place for, uh, to worship God. 
We see the southern lens. So the law wants to teach us so that we do the writing and we know the writing and do the writing at all times. We are going to look at it rapidly in three points. The first point we are looking at is how to behave in the house of God. The first point is what? How to behave in the house of God. The second point is activities in the house of God. The second point is what? Activities in the house of God. And the last point is praying for the church. Praying for the church. The Lord will help us as we are listening to this message that we put them to practice and the blessing of God will come upon us and upon the church as a whole in Jesus' name. Amen. And those that will listen through the internet and through CD as they obey also the Lord's blessing will come upon them and upon the church together in Jesus' name. Now, let's look at the first point which is how to behave in the house of God. Where we read before in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 14 to 16 I'll read again. These things write I unto thee hoping to come unto thee shortly but if I tarry if I tarry long, that thou mightest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. That is, individually, everyone needs to know how he or she ought to behave in the house of God. If A knows how to behave in the house of God and he behaves so, B knows how to behave in the house of God and behave so. C knows how to behave in the house of God and behave so. Then there will be orderliness in the house of God. But if A knows how to behave in the house of God and behave so, B doesn't know how to behave in the house of God and don't behave so, there will not be orderliness in the house of God. So everyone individually need to know how to behave in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. Which is what? The church of the living God. The pillar and ground of the truth. It is not the pillar and ground for deceit or for lying. But the pillar and ground of the truth. The truth must be spoken in the house of God. Praise the Lord. So, there is a way. God expects us to behave in his house because the house of God is the church of the living God like we read before. It is the pillar and ground of the truth. So it is not a place to play around, to while away our time. You know, many feel that's what church is all about. A place to play around and while away the time. And also, it is not a recreation center. It is not what? A recreation center. Some felt it's a recreation center. And we see in some churches they even have what? Table tennis. In the corner where they need to go and play table tennis and things like that. It's not a re recreation center. We understand. And you understand? And it's not a disco party. Because some feel, ah, I'm going to dance, I'm going to church, I'm going to dance very well today. I'm going to. It's not a, a disco party. We understand. So that is why we say the our world is now in the church. The church is now in the world. The world. So the rowdiness we see in the world, we see in the church. The rowdiness we see in disco party, we see it in the church. But the Lord is saying, no, that's not how to behave in the house of God. Uh, but it is the center of holiness. The house of God is what? The center of holiness. The truth and the worship of God in truth and in spirit. Let's see how it uh, should be. <clears throat> A, we are going to look at it in three uh, area. How it should be. A, control your feet in the house of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 1 Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools for they consider not that they do evil He said keep thy foot 
when you get to the house of God. You are not running here, running there, running, you understand. You keep thy food. It's not the time to say, have you heard? And this is it. No, it is the time to keep thy food. And be more ready to hear. Not be more ready to speak. Be more ready to do what? Hear. Yeah. You want to learn new things. You want to receive new understanding. And you want to put them to practice. You want your life to be more like that of Jesus. That is why uh, the Lord said, Be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. You know, we see in many places of worship, they don't know they are doing evil. Instead of keeping their foot and be more ready to hear, we see everybody jumping up and down and things like that and saying, this one is speaking, that one is speaking. They say, ah, oh, they feel they are social. They feel they are what? Social. But they are doing evil before God. Because they say, for they consider not that they do evil. So, you see, the Lord is telling us something. He's showing us how to behave in the house of God. He's showing us how to do what? Behave in the house of God. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. Also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasted with his feet, sinned. For soul to be without knowledge is not good. Instead of be more ready to hear, to get more knowledge, they are not receiving that. They are hasty with their foot, with their feet. And he said, he that with, uh, that is hasty with his feet is what? He sinned. He commits sin. They consider not that they do evil. Romans chapter 3 verse 15. Romans chapter 3 verse 15. Romans 3 15. Romans 3 15. It says here, Their feet are swift to shed blood. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Swift to go and commit abortion. Swift to uh, evil things. You understand? To shed blood. Proverbs chapter 21. Verse 5. Proverbs 21. Verse 5. The thought of the diligent tend only to plenteous, plenteousness, but of everyone that is hasty only to want. You understand? The one that is hasty. Instead of being patient, allow the Lord to direct. You understand? Listing. You do what? Listing. So it will still lead to wrong thing. Now let's go to Isaiah and see example of angels. Even highest classes of angel. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2. <coughs> Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2. And also learn from them. <coughs> I'll read verse 1 and 2 so that we get on, uh, a better understanding from it. In the year that, the, uh, that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his uh, train filled the temple. Above he stood the seraphims, those high-ranking angels. Each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face. Giving respect to who? To God. And with twin, he covered his feet so that he would not be running up and down, and except when he's, God wants him to do that. You understand? Yeah. And with twin, he did fly. So if angels themselves keep their foot in the presence of the Lord, what of us? We need to keep our feet and not running up and down. You understand? 
Except when it's necessary. Let's say one is press. You need to use the restroom. Okay, that's necessary. Not just wanting to move around and say and be making a sign to another. Let's let's go and talk. Let's go to that corner and talk a little. You you understand? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We should know how to behave in the house of God. B control your mouth. Control your mouth. That's the book of uh, Romans chapter uh, 3. Romans chapter 3. Verse 12 to 18. It says, They are all gone out of the way. They are gone what? Out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. Graveyard that is open. With their tongues they have used deceit. They've lied. And poison of herbs is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing. Whose mouth is full of cursing. Somebody that said is a child of God and cursing. God said they are out of the way. They are what? Out of the way. And bitterness. Their feet their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Because if one fear God, he will keep his feet in the presence of God. And he will control what? His mouth. Romans, sorry, I mean to say, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. Proverbs 13, 3. Proverbs 13, 3. Proverbs 13, 3. It says, He that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. He that openeth wide his lips, he can't keep quiet. She can't keep quiet and control her tongue. Shall have destruction. And we remember where we read before during our self description, Psalm 66, verse 18. In the, he said, Sorry, that's a different place I, I wanted to go, but I give you a different one. <coughs> in Psalm, he said, in the multitude of words, they wanted no sin. That of 66, 18, he's talking about a different thing. You understand? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So we see, in the multitude of words, they wanted no sin. If one uh, just continue talking and talking and talking and talking, the sin will come in. What we come in? Sin. We come in. So the Lord is telling us that we must be able to control our tongue. That is what the Lord wants us to do. Let's look at uh, uh, Proverbs 10, 19. 10, 19, which I just quoted. In the multitude of words, there wanted not sin, but he that refrained his lips is wise. He that does what? Refrained his lips is wise. But he that just open it and just be talking and talking and talking and talking will be committing sin. Verse 31. It says, The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the frontward tongue shall be cut out. 32. The lips of the righteous knows what is acceptable. He knows what is acceptable. He knows what he should say, what he shouldn't say. You understand? But the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness. Speaketh frowardness. You see, that is what the Lord is showing us here. He speaketh what? Frowardness. Now, let's uh, look at uh, verse chapter 29 of the same proverb. Verse 20. Yeah, 29, verse 20. It says here, C 
Seer thou a man that is hasty in his words. Seer thou a woman that is hasty in her words. Seer thou a boy that is hasty in his words. Seer thou a girl that is hasty in her words. There is more hope in a fool than of him. Mm. Hasty. Instead of listening for us before speaking, mm -hmm. he just jump into the matter. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. God will help us in Jesus' name. We need to control our mouth, our tongue in the house of God. Uh, C. Reward for behaving well in church. Reward for behaving well in the church, in the house of God. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 32. John 8, 32. John 8, 32. John chapter 8, verse 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When one is ready to hear, the person will know what? The truth. But if he's not ready to hear, instead of listening, he's speaking. He will not understand what is being said. And he will not know the truth, and nothing will set him or her free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. It says here, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God, through the spirit so we are the house of god but the house of god the stones must be in the same pattern mm. we understand this one is listening that one can listen this one can listen it's not somebody that is jumping uh, before listening he just rush you understand so now he said we are now being built together but who is the cornerstone jesus, jesus christ and the foundation are what the apostles so, if you look at Jesus, does Jesus Christ just jump into matter? No. We understand. We look at the apostles. The same thing. Then, other believers that come, that are built upon, the same way. We also must have the same character, the same pattern of behaving in the house of God. Let's take us to the second point, activities in the house of God. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 14 We've seen how to behave in the house of God but uh, are there no activities in the house of God? Yes, there are activities. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 14 Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. I say in many places of worship today we don't see decency. We don't see what? decency, no orderliness. Everything is rowdy. But, he said, let all things be done decently and in order. There are many activities God expects in his house. And these activities include the following but not limited to them. It includes the following but not what? Limited to them. One, singing. We can sing in the house of God. Let's look at it in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. Ephesians 5, verse 19. That's part of the activities. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual what? Song, not worldly song. We see now that many places of worship, they uh, sing their song, beat their song like what? Like the worldly one and dance to it like worldly people. You understand? But he said, 
I will read it again. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. To who? The to the Lord, not to the body, to shake the body and all those things. You understand? It's to the Lord. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. B. Teaching biblical doctrines is part of the activity in the church. Let's go to uh, the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 to 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 to 4. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exalt with long, all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they eat to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. They say, No, this one is only holiness, holiness, holiness. Say, so We must be holy, we must be holy. Uh -huh. So one cannot just do a little thing like the world. You understand? He said, the time will come when they will not endure what? Sound doctrine. But preach the word. Give them the sound doctrine. So part of the activity in the church is to give what? Sound doctrine. Biblical doctrines. Look at it that the apostle did that in Acts chapter 2 verse 42. 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 It says here, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Praise the Lord. So the apostles, they gave the doctrine, biblical doctrine, and it's part of the activities in the church. So we must give it. See, speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21. It says here, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 27. I mean to say, If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by cause, and let one interpret. Speaking in tongues, we we hear more of it when uh, the prayer meetings during prayer meetings. You understand? So he said, speaking in tongues is part of it. But when one is speaking in tongue, maybe to lead, there must be an interpreter. If not, if no interpreter, someone that have the gift of interpretation of tongues, then. One should speak in tongue between him and God. You understand? So that's part of the activity also in the church. D. Prophecies. D is what? Prophecy. But thank God that one comes out regularly. When we are teaching, prophecies comes out within the message. And it can still come out even when not within the message. In the same uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, now verse 24. And verse 25. But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one on land, he is convinced of all, he is judge of all, and thus are the secret of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God, and report that God is in you of a truth. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, that is why at times when we are teaching or preaching, it will just reveal something in your life. You understand? That's part of it. And it gives a prophecy of what will happen if you take this step and this step in the teaching and in the preaching. That's part of prophecy. But it can also come in the way, say, God says the Lord. You understand? Praise the Lord. E. Exaltation. 
exaltation by lay men. That is, believers can exalt one another. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. That's part of the activities of the church. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And we got to memorize this. He said, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exalting one another. Doing what? Exalting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. We need to exalt one another. Continue. Remain firm in the Lord. You understand? This is how the Lord wants it. And some, you encourage and exalt one another. Have the Lord's Supper and a love feast. The Lord's Supper and what? A love feast. By the grace of God, uh, we see how to start having the Lord's Supper maybe every three months as the Lord leads us. The Lord's Supper and the Lord's uh, love feast. The Lord's Supper is what we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 but there may not be time for us to read everything so we just read 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16 and 17 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 16 and 17 it says the cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Christ, the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we all for we are all partakers of that one bread. That when we have the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion, you understand? It's part of the activity of the uh, church, you understand, in the house of God, and is uh, we include uh, the law feast among it. We go to Jude, Jude, that's second to the last book of the Bible, Jude, verse 12. Jude, verse 12. He said, These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without waters. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit we direct without fruit are twice dead, plucked up by the root. That is, they have a love feast, but some misunderstood the love feast. They use it as an occasion of committing what? Sin. So, as we are having a baby dedication, it's not an occasion for sin. It's occasion of having a love what feast together and in getting souls into the kingdom of God. We understand. Mm -hmm. So the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You know, some can even see it as a uh, avenue to have business contact. That's what some people even think uh, uh, the church is all about. You understand? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, G Bible reading. And today we have had what? Bible reading. It's part of the activity of the church. Let's look at it in 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 13. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exaltation, to doctrine. Give attention to reading. We need to have Bible reading. Bible reading is part of the activity of the church. H. Prayer. We read it before. Okay, let's read again. Let's read now. Acts chapter 4, verse 24 to 31. Acts chapter 4, verse 24 to 31. Acts chapter 4, verse 24 to 31. It says here, and when they heard that they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God. You see, lifted up their voice to God. That's prayer. Which hath made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in, in them. Who by the mouth of David thy servant hath said, Why did the, the, the Eden rage and the people imagine vain things? 
so they continue praying on to verse 20 31 we understand so prayers is a part of the activities of the church of in the house of god then i exercise of the gift of the spirit uh, as we see in Acts chapter 3 verse 6 peter and john going to the beautiful gate and they saw a lame man and they prayed for him and the lord healed him that's exercise of the gift of the spirit is part of the activity of the church then j report report after we've gone out to evangelize we give tracts to people we preach and things like that we still come back and give the report to the church i preached to this person i evangelized that i gave tracts and that one say we come and something like that let's look at it in Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15 though we are not going to read all we are good, just going to read some but on your own you can read everything verse 1 to 35 he said and certain men which came down from uh judea taught the brethren and said except ye be circumcised after the manner of moses ye cannot be saved and now uh and when uh, therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostle and elders about this question. And being brought on the way, uh, on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles and the cause and the cause great joy unto all the brethren they were given the report and when they were come to jerusalem they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders and they declare all things that god had done with them they gave report you understand so we can give report also even the report of the conflict that happened on the, uh, when you are trying to preach and things like that you give all the report so we put everything to god in prayer we understand so now k baptism we also uh part of the activity of the church is baptism in water baptism in water and we see there in Acts chapter 2 verse 41 it says then they that gladly receive his word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls you understand they were baptized in what after they believe so after one believe truly genuinely in christ and repent of his sins he need to desire to be baptized in water and let the pastor know i want to be baptized in water so that the pastor will now say what and what uh, uh, uh give a baptismal class to him or her and so that he or her may get baptized in water to the glory of god then l preaching preaching we can see that in Acts chapter 8 verse 4 to 5 they they were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word and n sending missionaries out Acts chapter 13 let's just read this briefly Acts chapter 13 verses 1 to 4 Acts chapter 13 verses 1 to 4 now there we are in the church that were at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simon that was called Niger and Lucio and of Cyrene and many which had been brought up uh, with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them and when they had fasted and prayed and laid and their hands on them they sent them away so and look at four so they being sent forth by the holy ghost departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to cyprus so actually the holy ghost sent them for through the church uh, for to the mission so uh n collection of tithes and offering uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 2 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 2 because everything must be done according to the scripture we don't do anything out of the scripture you understand 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 16 verse 2 I'll read 1 and 2 better I said now concerning the collection of the saints for the saints 
as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, uh, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, that Sunday, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him. Not as God has not prospered him. As God has done what? Prosper him. Not more than what God, God has given to him. That like go and steal and give. No, no, no. As God has done what? Prospered him. That there be no gathering when I come. So, oh, addition of new members. Addition of new members are part of activities of the church. We need new members always. So, now, let's look at it in Acts chapter 2 verse 41. Acts chapter 2 verse 41. Then, they that gladly receive his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So, addition of new members are part of the activities of the church. But we didn't see dancing and uh, making disco party as part of the activity of the church. No. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We go to the final point, which is praying for the church. Ephesians chapter uh, 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 15 to 23. Wherefore, I also, when I heard of your faith in the Lord, in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. In making mention of you in my prayer. I'm praying for you, child, for that church, the church in Ephesus. I'm praying for you. He said, what are the prayer I'm praying on your behalf? He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You know, if one don't understand, there are many things we will teach when we say, no, that doesn't matter. You understand? There is a need for the eyes of understanding to be enlightened. That's what we make one to really understand what God is being taught. He continued. He said, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of, his, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. You understand? And let me just quickly explain this last portion before I move on. He said, the name of Jesus is not just that he has power over every principality and power in this world, even the one to come. We understand. He will now continue. And at put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Christ is the head over all things, over the church, which is his body. The church is what? His body. That is myself, yourself, every one of us together, we are part of the body of Christ. So we must do everything as Christ wants so that we fitly fit his body. Mm -hmm. We understand. Because let's just, assuming this portion of my finger become a different thing. Let's say this portion of my finger is green. This ear to ear is red. Ear to ear is purple. Ear to ear is grey. Then, ear to ear, instead of having bone there, I have metal there. Ear to ear, instead of uh, bones and uh, flesh and this thing, I have plastic there. Does that body fitly join together? Mm -hmm. We understand. So the same way, everything Christ is telling us is to make us be exactly the body of Christ fitly joined together. So, uh, 
let's read 23 again which is his body the fullness of him that filled all in all so praying for the church is so important that it is <clears throat> term a ministry of its own it is term what a ministry of its own and as we heard in the said the scripture is the highest ministry anybody can be involved in colossians chapter 4 <clears throat> verse 12 and 13 colossians chapter 4 verses 12 and 13 Colossians chapter 4 verses 12 and 13 it says here <clears throat> Epaphras who is one of you a servant of Christ salute you always laboring is always doing what laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect that you may do what stand perfect obey god in every way and stand perfect before god that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of god in all what the will of god for i bear him record that he had a great zeal for you that is morning afternoon night Epaphras is just praying for the Colossians church that everybody, the every member of the church there will be perfect in all the will of God. He's praying, his heart, and whenever he goes to Colossian church and he sees that ah, this one is not yet perfect, that one is not yet, his heart will be what? Shattered. He will run again, go to God again in prayer. We understand. So, until he see everything perfect then his joy will be what full and then that are in laodicea he's praying for the colossians to be perfect he's praying for the laodicean to be perfect and then in hierapolis so when he gets to hierapolis are they perfect yet ah same perfection he goes again to his closet he start praying he goes to uh, Laodicea. They perfect. You see imperfection. He goes again to his closet, interceding for them. He goes to Colossians. You see, they are not yet perfect, interceding for them. Do we know what happened? When Moses went to uh, the mountain to pray, to be with God, after fasting and being with God for how many days? 40 days and 40 nights, he came. When he came, he found out that, ah, the people have deviated. They've gone to idolatry. Because Moses had fasted 40 days, 40 nights. He came to eat a little. These people did not let him rest. No imperfection. Even instead of perfection, what was there? They've gone worse. Moses have to go back again another 40 days and 40 nights. They want to kill Moses. God will help us. We will be perfect in Jesus name Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 48 be thou perfect as your father which is in heaven is perfect Epaphra is praying for the church so that they will be perfect in all the will of God and my prayer is that every one of us will be perfect in all the will of God in Jesus name and we also will be involved in the ministry of intercession praying for others praying for what? for others but Paul said the husband man must first be the particular of the fruit so we ourselves that are interceding for others we must make sure that we pray for ourselves that god make us perfect and we live a perfect life by striving by doing what striving, striving to uh, be that let's read luke before we read the final place and pray luke chapter 22 and chapter 13 i mean to say luke 13 Luke 13, verse 23 to 24. He said, Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say, unto you we seek to enter in and shall not be able. He said, You strive. You are asking questions, are there few that will be saved? He said, 
you strive to enter in. And we have to strive for perfection. We have to strive for what? Perfection. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And now, Ezekiel 22, verse 30. And as we read it, we stand up to pray. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. He says here, And I sought for a man, or better still, we read from verse 28, And our prophet have dubbed them with untampered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus said the Lord God, when the Lord had not spoken, the people of the land have used oppression and exercise robbery, and averse the poor and needy, yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. When, and I sought for a man, I sought for a woman also, among them, that should make up the edge, and stand in the gap bef uh, before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. And God said, I sought for a man, for a woman, that will stand before me also for the church. Because what we see in different places today huh, is just like the world. He said, I found none. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, said the Lord. But the Lord will not destroy the church because we will stand and be in the gap between the Lord and the people of God. And the Lord will not destroy this place where we are uh, uh, Riverdale, uh, Maryland, United States, and the world as a whole, because we will stand in the gap. And you tell the Lord, let's go to the Lord in prayer, tell the Lord, I will stand in the gap. Lord, make me perfect. Make me perfect. Make me perfect. Make me perfect as you are perfect. Purify me, body, spirit, and soul, and help me to be perfect in all thy will. Help me to be perfect in all thy will, and I will stand between you and the people, between you and the land, Lord, and intercede. Oh, Father, Lord, make me perfect. Make me perfect. Make me perfect. Oh, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Make me perfect. Make me perfect. Body, spirit, and soul. Holy body, spirit, and soul. And I will stand between you and the people. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Lord, purge me. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, purge me. Lord, cleanse me. Make me whole. Make me whole. Make me whole. Body, spirit, and soul. Make me whole, body, spirit, and soul. Make me whole, body, spirit, and soul. Make me whole, body, spirit, and soul. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. Make me whole, body, spirit, and soul. Help me, O Lord. Help me, O Lord, and make me ready. Help me, Lord, make me ready. Let's talk to the Lord, let's talk to the Lord. Purge me, cleanse me, and make me perfect. And use me because I'm ready to be used of you. Use me because I'm ready to be used of you. Talk to the Lord. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to Him in prayer. Talk to Him. The Lord wants to use you. Release yourself to be used of the Lord. Release yourself. Tell Him to wash you. To cleanse you afresh in the blood of Jesus. To make you holy as he is holy. As uh, the song we have sang, uh, that we sang, take time to be holy. Tell the Lord you take time to be holy. You strive to be holy. But ask for his help. And tell him he can count on you. To be between him and the people. Between him and the church. Between him and Riverdale, between him and Maryland, between him and the United States of America, between him and the world, so that he will not destroy them. He will be the intercessor. And you will know how to behave in the house of God. You will be more ready to hear. You will be more ready to hear. More ready to listen. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord, the 
Lord will use you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the way you spoke spoken unto us this day. We thank you for that word that we've heard. Lord, we pray that you help each and every one, O oh Lord, even Lord God, to uh, have this orderliness, O oh Lord, that you've spoken about in thy house. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray that everyone will know how to behave in the house of God, that everyone will put to practice all that you have spoken unto us. In Jesus' name, and Lord God, help us that no one, Lord, will behave contrary to the way you have taught us so that Lord the church will not be in this uh, uh, will not be <clears throat> in this array of all disorderliness in Jesus name Father we pray that you make everyone perfect so that Lord each and every one of us will be an intercessor that will be between you and the people between you and thy church, between you and uh, Riverdale, between you and Maryland, between you and United States of America, between you and the whole world, so that you might not destroy them, you will not destroy them, but save them in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, let your grace continue in our life. Thank you, Father Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.